Let's dive into how gas prices work and what influences their cost. Crude oil is the base commodity that is used to make gasoline, which historically has made up somewhere in the range of 40 to 50% of the overall price of gas. Or, in other words, the price of crude is only about half of why gas prices are high or low, respectively. Crude oil is the most widely traded global item, but its price has a significant reliance on controls set in place by OPEC or the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Due to increasing production of renewables in many countries' pushes towards energy independence, OPEC has less of a sway on the global market than it used to, but its power is still present. It's also important to note that all grades of crude can't be used to make gasoline, and thus, price swings in certain grades may not affect gasoline prices. The price of crude is primarily impacted by supply and demand. An increase in the supply can cause prices to fall, while an increase in demand can cause prices to rise. In 2022, with the war in Ukraine raging and the world unveiling sanctions on Russian oil, we're essentially seeing supply drop, but demand stay the same or even spike, causing prices to shoot up. Unfortunately, the core facets of free market economies are largely at play when we look at gas prices today. It's also important to note that the price of crude oil is somewhat regional. For example, the Keystone Pipeline XL, which was effectively canceled by President Biden in June 2021, is often cited as a reason for higher gas prices in the US. However, the pipeline largely would have served to transport Canadian crude from Canada down to refineries in Mexico, which would have had little direct impact. In fact, many independent watchdogs for the project projected that the pipeline's construction may actually have risen the average cost of gasoline in the US, especially in places like the Midwest, where Canadian oil would have been diverted due to the pipeline, making it more scarce in that region and thus driving up costs. It's in this facet that oil prices can be a little counterintuitive, which brings us to the next major part of the gas price puzzle, oil refining. Crude is practically useless for fuel for vehicles. This means that it needs to be refined and distilled into gasoline. Roughly speaking, a barrel of crude oil refines down to about 20 gallons of gasoline, along with 12 additional gallons of fuel oil. There's a remaining 10 or so gallons of byproducts per barrel that are either discarded or used to make other petrochemical products. Refining costs roughly come out to about 14% of the retail cost of gasoline. However, one factor that can impact oil prices is when demand skyrockets, but refining capacity stays roughly flat. When we have sudden events like the war in Ukraine impacting oil demand, or rather lessening supply, simply pulling more crude out of the ground doesn't necessarily solve the issue if there isn't refinery capacity. You might say, well, companies need to have more refineries for this scenario then, but again, the problem is more complex. Companies want to turn maximum profits, which means that having additional refinery capacity on standby, doing nothing in preparation for infrequent high demand events, doesn't make business sense in most cases. The other components of gasoline prices are distribution and marketing. Distribution and marketing costs, like running and operating gas stations, account for about 14% of the price of retail gasoline. Unethical price fixing and collusion is such a persistent problem in the US that the FTC conducts frequent probes to discover this behavior, the most recent being by direction of Biden in late 2021. Finally, taxes have a major impact on gas prices, at about 16% in the United States. In the US, federal taxes equate to about 18 cents per gallon, and state taxes vary by state, but come out to about an average of 30 cents per gallon. It should be noted that state taxes significantly vary, though. In Alaska, it's as low as 9 cents per gallon, and in California, as high as 60 cents per gallon. Another thing to note is that taxes on gas are significantly higher in Europe, dwarfing US numbers, at about $4 per gallon in many Western European countries. Finally, demand has a significant impact on price, as we discussed before. However, demand tends to change quite rapidly, like we saw when things started reopening at the end of the pandemic. Conversely, supply tends to be less elastic, taking many months to change. Because the gasoline supply needle is so hard to budge, gas prices per gallon can be very volatile when we see demand jumps. 
Unlike power for the electrical grid, gasoline suppliers have less ability to cater supply to demand, meaning the price must fluctuate. This is largely due to simply how many pieces go into refining and making this natural resource available to the public. So while presidential policies have some effect on small parts of the overall process, the reason why gas prices go up or down has much more to do with the concept of supply and demand rather than one single person doing their job right or wrong. So that's how gas prices work.